I now call to order the New Carlisle Regular City Council meeting, Monday, August 6, 2018, at 7 p.m. Mrs. Brown. Mayor Reynolds. Here. Mr. Lowry. Here. Mr. Shammy. Here. Mr. Cobb. Here. Mr. Cook. Here. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Here. Six members present. All right, our invocation will be done tonight by uh, Vice Mayor Bill Lindsay. Your head. Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask you to guide us and lead us in all of our decisions we make to benefit this city and the citizens. Father, we ask you to protect all of our police officers, our fire department, and our military. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I do a flag. I pledge to flag I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yes. Yeah. Action on the minutes for the tax budget public hearing. So moved. Second. Discussion? Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Minutes accepted, 6 0. All right. Do we have a motion for action on the minutes for the work session 7 9 18? So moved. I'll second. Okay. <clears throat> Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Reynolds? Abstention, I was not here. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. And it's accepted 5 0. And then regular meeting 7 16 18. Council? So moved. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. And it's accepted 6 0. Communications, there are none tonight. City Manager, to report Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of the public. I'd like to go over the City Manager to report with you. Um, first, uh, under informational items, we have the TCC annual meeting and lunch. That is this Friday, August 10th. And we do have three people from the city administration going, and that is myself, our finance director, Ms. Watson, and our service director, Mr. Kitko. We'll also be taking two council members with us as well, and that is Councilman uh, Lindsay and then Councilman Cook. Every year, TCC, which is our transportation coordinating committee, they're out of Springfield, Ohio. Uh, they have an annual meeting that also is followed by luncheon, and the city does go every year. Uh, new copier, we did. Uh, we will be getting a third and final quote. Uh, on your report, it says 8-6. That was a typo. It's actually 8-8. Eight, eight. I do apologize about that. So we'll have the third and final quote, and at the next council meeting, I'll present the quotes to council uh, and with how the city administration would like to proceed. Street light assessments. Every year, we assess for street lighting. So you guys get that bill from the assessed to your tax to, to light the street, uh, public streets. Um, this year, we will need to increase that by two cents. Right now, we pay about 58 cents per, I don't remember the lineage, I do apologize about that, but we do need to raise it up to 60. And the reason we need to do that is because who we uh, get our lighting from, which is Miami Valley Lighting, they lost a 5% discount that they had honored through them through dp &L. So we have to make up that difference. So instead of it being 58 cents, it will go up to 60. And I have some additional numbers that are not on that manager's report that I worked out today. 58 cents brings in around $91,000 a year for the city. Uh, we need approximately 93,500, and at 60 cents, and it brings in approximately 94,150. So um, that will uh, allow for some error if we have any ups or downs on the uh, 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 computations. Uh, but we will need to pass that. If we don't pass it, then the city will have to get some money from the general fund to make up the difference. Um, that is introduced tonight. They'll be voting on it on August 20th. Intergovernmental meeting. I was not at that meeting. Uh, Mr. Lindsay was. However, I did include the packet that was uh, dispersed. 
So if you have any questions on anything that's in the city manager's report for the intergovernmental inter meeting, I would ask that you uh, ask Councilman Lindsay those questions. Any questions? Any questions, Council? Yeah. No? Nope. And one last item. Um, we found out today, or I found out today, if anyone has called the city building and left the voicemail and you have not heard back from anyone from the city building, we do deeply apologize. We found out today the company that we have our phones with is called Avaya, and every periodically they do firmware updates. Well, this particular firmware up update actually prohibited some people not to get their voicemails to their emails. How we have it set up at the city building, you call, you leave a voicemail, it gets sent to, sent to our email, we quickly open it up and listen to it right on the computer. It was not doing that. Well, red flag went off today, I got back from vacation, I have not received a new voicemail since July 12th. Usually I get quite a few a day. So, um, opened up the software program, everything looked great, and I proceeded on to call the phone company and they did, did inform us that um, there was a firmware update they're trying to get it fixed ASAP. So again, if you have left a voicemail at the city building and not heard back, we do apologize. We will be scrambling to find these emails, uh, the voicemails, and get, get back to you in a timely manner. And that is all I have for the city management report. Council, any questions? Yes. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, Mr. Bridge, welcome back. Thank you. Looks like you had a good time in Florida. You got a nice stand. <laughs> it, it, it was tough. It was really hard to get it, let me say. Hard to get back on the plane? Uh, kinda, not gonna lie about that. <laughs> Uh, just a quick question. I know you got a lot on your plate since you just got back. Sure. Um, will you still be eventually looking into not necessarily iPads, but just other options and price yes. tiers for yeah. the Yes, I will. Thanks for bringing that back up. We did uh, get some pricing for some iPads. They were kind of heavy, kind of high. So we're we'll looking at other avenues. And what Councilman Lowry is uh, basically saying is we would like to find a way to give our council member tablets opposed to printing out massive packets every week. It's a big cost to the city when you have to do that, not only for the cost of the paper, but also the cost to use the copier. Um, so we would like to just streamline it, modernize it. So I will be getting quotes to get about seven tablets for the council members to have. So that way we can easily upload it to a drive and they can get all their information right on the spot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Lindsay. Again, w welcome back. Thank you. Uh, on the street lighting assessment, is it gonna stay at 60 cents for a while? Because it seems like every the last Two or three years, it's been a couple of cent increase every year. Um, it's been 58 cents for as long as I've been Has it? here. Uh, as far as the city manager goes, what was done when I was a planning director, okay. I, I, I thought it had went up a couple. And they probably do because years every so often we'll we'll have to. I mean, the contract expires like anything else, so we have to get a, either redo the contract terms. Anytime you redo a contract, it usually means up the price a little bit. Okay. This particular issue did deal with DPNL dropping that five percent discount. Okay, thank you. Council, <laughs> yes. Thank you, Mr. Britt. Thank you. <clears throat> Moving on, we will go to comments from members of the public. Please limit comments to five minutes and state your name and address. Ms. Olkowski. Linda Eggleston Nowakowski, 317 South Main Street, New Carlisle. Um, I wanted to bring you some updates on the community garden. Um, we recently filed uh, and incorporated in the state of Ohio, and we have been approved for 501c3. Uh, so if anybody has any spare change that they want to pitch into the garden, we can write you a little receipt that gets you a tax write off. Um, more than that, though, I wanted to tell you that uh, we've grown the garden and we're planning some other things. And I've been in the process for the past several weeks, almost two months, working on a grant for $30,000 from the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America Domestic Hunger Grants. Um, I was trying, I've got a limited number of characters as I write this proposal, so I was trying to figure out ways to cut the number of words that I had to write. And what I landed up doing, you have in front of you, I gave you, uh, the council has five pages. If anybody wants to see this, I put the five slides on 
here. Uh, what you see in the first slide is what the garden looks like what the network around the garden looked like prior to the formation of the, net, the garden. The second one came in with uh, your approval of the garden. And um, the receipt of a $3,000 grant $4,000 grant from the ELCA the first year we were in the garden. The second year, we got a $2,000 grant from National Church of the Brethren through the local Church of the Brethren. Um, the, if you look on the upper right-hand corner there, you see something called LSIM, which is called Lutheran Saints in Ministry. And it's a coalition of four churches, one large church and three rural churches, or small churches that really can't do things on their own. And the church locally that's on there is Horizon Christ in Donaldsville, which was formed as a merger when St. Mark's closed in New Carlisle. So that's the Lutheran Church for the New Carlisle area. Um, in the 2017 year, we got a grant, another grant uh, for five thousand dollars from the Church of the Brethren, and. John and I both had been participating in the development of the Clark County Local Food Council. Um, due to my role in the garden, I was approached by the Clark County Community Health people to be representative on that council and bring issues and also particularly to look at ways that we can access the Hispanic community, because the county has a hard time doing that. Uh, and I, I have some connections in there as I'm teaching English and citizenship to those people. What, what you see in green uh, the green lines there are where we have from people from the garden with direct connection to those organizations. We have direct input into those organizations and get good response. What you see in the fifth slide is what we are anticipating being able to do if we get the $30,000 grant. I want you to look at the red circles because those are the one the things that will come into play. We're looking at getting a greenhouse, a teaching greenhouse that we can have growing all year round and be able to work with the school district on having students come in and learn about growing plants and maybe some aquaculture. It also would give us a growing season that would allow us to furnish produce to the pantry at a time when produce at the pantry is rare. So it would allow us to help there in the community as well. Um, we've also considered the um, possibility of adding uh, a restaurant um, that is a no-price menu restaurant. I did a study of one of these restaurants for my PhD thesis, and they are now well established as a model both as not-for-profit and for-profit. Um, there are a number of organizations that are not-for-profit, so All May Eat has a number of uh, Places. If you come in, you pay what you think the meal is worth or what you can afford. If you can't afford 
something you can volunteer time to do the dishes, to bust tables, to clean the floors, whatever. But it allows you a way to get a good meal at a low cost. Um, I'm trying to see here. There we go. We have already started what you see there on the left of, as an entrepreneur class. Um, we're working with the business development group of the local food council, and we're going to be teaching a class on what people can do out of their homes in order to use food as a source of income, uh, primarily baking making jellies, whatever, so that they can learn how they can do this to be able to supplement their income. Um, we have been talking with the library in terms of setting up a teaching garden at the library that they can use during the summer to teach about plants and growing things. Uh, we've approached uh, Jim Gastineau, and he is willing to donate that land if we can come to an agreement on how it will be maintained. Um, that land that he has is right behind the library, and it's also adjacent to the senior housing. And we have talked about putting in some wheelchair accessible beds that people could do from a chair rather than trying to kneel down uh, to make it make gardening more available. The last thing on that is uh, trying to look at a buyer's food co-op uh, where we everybody buys into a cooperative membership, orders food at wholesale rates, and then they do the work themselves in terms of sorting it and distributing it and saving the money that they would get charged by the grocery store for doing that work. Um, as I did this, I was truly amazed at the impact we've had. Um, our garden is considered one of the top three gardens in Clark County um, by Ohio State Agricultural Extension. And we are recognized in national circles already for the work that we're doing there. And I'd like to encourage the city to Consider what the impact is, because if for some reason that land would be sold and we would lose the garden, we go back to this. And this is a much stronger community. Thank you. Thank you so much. Do you have any questions for Mr. Malkowski? You can go ahead. Okay. Wanda, thanks for the update and report. Uh, I just had a couple quick questions. One, do you, does uh, Tecumseh, as far as, you know, I don't know a lot about FFA, it wasn't one of my things, but uh, is there any interest? Is there anything you guys can do together with FFA? It doesn't have feet. No? <laughs> so, they're livestock not, only. They're huh? not a whole lot interested. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, I've talked with Paula Crew, and she is distinctly interested. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I figured that somewhere you would think that would be, you know, useful somewhere, it comes to somewhere right. um, with the students there. But also, I forget where I'd read it, who posted it or who shared it or who commented on it. I had heard a, uh, a comment about bee, beehives possibly. Yes. And that grabbed my attention a lot. I mean, I, I love the gardening thing too, but the bees, I've always been interested in them, but living in the city, you know, in a small, you know, plat, nothing I can do with that. But what, can you fill me in on that? We've had a master gardener, uh, from Ohio State Agricultural Extension, who is willing to help us set up a beehive and train someone to take care of it. The question is, and I haven't dealt with it at all since I've been working on this grant proposal, mm -hmm. uh, is whether it would be allowed within the 
Until it's that's on. It's the USDA and since that's on city property, I didn't know if that would also be like a liability, possible insurance for. Well, they they got like they they got the liability insurance. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. it would just come down to more than likely, and I haven't looked at the code yet. It's under six eighteen under animals, but it's no different than harboring chickens or okay. something like that. So um, we would have to take a look at that that section of ordinances. As some council wants to do, we just amend the ordinance to allow bees. Right. Yeah. Okay. Do you know the scientific name of bees? I, if not, I'll Google it. Yeah, I'll, I'll still Google that. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. I had one quick question for you. Have you been to the uh, No Price Menu restaurant in Xenia, Ohio? They have one right downtown. Um, I've they, been by there. They, I have not been in it, but they have also have another one down south of Dayton, and they're getting ready to partner with Abiding Christ Lutheran Church, which is part of Lutheran States and Ministry in Fairborn. Oh, fantastic. We set one up in Fairborn. Fantastic. Yeah, I didn't know if that was something we could, you might want to work with then, try to bring one here. Well, what is beef up? On the very last page, it says beef up. Well, those, those are, since this, this grant does not come to the garden, it comes to Lutheran States and Ministry. Okay. And Sorry. if you uh, look on here, there are some community dinners and yes. breakfasts and feeding the hungry programs out of some other churches in that organization that we want to help them to be able to stay functional. Okay. Uh, so those were programs that were going to be up. So, I mean, this wasn't made up for you. Yeah. It was made up for my grant. Yeah. And um, I needed to help, help out there some, too. But um, we, John, John and I have talked very briefly about doing something here in town. And we think it's possible with limited limited resources to be able to set up a soup and sandwich kind of restaurant that doesn't have to have expensive pudding and all of the health department kinds of things um, that we could do this okay. and, and make it function. Thank you. Mr. Jones, you got a question? Uh, you had mentioned uh, a greenhouse mm -hmm. is that going to be at the school or back here at the garden? What was you thinking well, of putting the greenhouse? Have a third of an acre in agreement with you. Okay. So uh, you know we we certainly be interested in talking about getting the rest of the piece of land behind us or it, looking for something else. If if that was to happen, your 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 suggestion of getting the rest of the land back there. The, uh, would that be a permanent greenhouse then, or? Okay. Have you have you talked to the school district about maybe a greenhouse there or not? We we have Is talked it, to them about a possibility of getting land for a garden from them. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you. Council, any good other? good report by the way. Mm -hmm. Council, any other questions? Thank you so much, for Council. Are there any other comments from members of the public? Mr. Graham. Dale Graham, 114 South Main Street. I would like to thank and think we should all commend Deputy Rachel Allender. Uh, she was able to apprehend a woman who escaped from the Clark County Jail yesterday afternoon within less than an hour after she escaped. Thank, thank you, you, Rachel. Mm -hmm. And I, we discovered some very disturbing news over the weekend. We're able to confirm it today. Jacob Shaw, the deputy who shot my son Andy on Labor Day, is back on road patrol. We were able to confirm with uh, Chief Deputy Meyer that he was put back on road patrol last Monday. For 10 weeks, he will be in training with another deputy. <coughs> He's not assigned to New Corral, but he was seen in town yesterday evening. So <clears throat> watch yourself. Thank you. Any other comments from members of the public? 
Uh, committee reports none tonight. Mrs. Berner, resolutions. Okay. We have one resolution, an intro and action this evening. Resolution 18 12. A resolution declaring the necessity of improving the streets of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio by lighting them. Council? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lindsay. I move to accept resolution 1812R. Second. And an explanation of this ordinance. Um, I stated earlier that council will be voting on the ordinance for the, excuse me, street lighting assessments. This is the first step of the uh, process we have to go through by state law. It's a resolution that says we need we need to do it, hence the resolution of necessity. Council, questions, comments? Mr. Cobb. Uh, I think before we start worrying about lighting, we need to fix our streets. Okay, well, that's a work session discussion. This has nothing to do with the current state of the, this is how well, you want to take you want to take money here and increase the light for the lighting. Well, the other flip side of this is not have street lighting. I mean, this is something the council does every single year. It's called general housekeeping. So um, if you don't approve the resolution tonight, it's dead in the water and uh, you won't have any money to light your streets. Again, this is something we do every year. Ah. Are you done? Yeah. Council, any other comments, questions, or concerns? Nope. Mrs. Barney. Good. Mr. Cobb. Yeah. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. <coughs> Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Resolution accepted 6 0. Ordinances, we have seven and intro and two actions. Mrs. Burner. Okay, the first one, ordinance 18 16. It's introduction tonight, public hearing and action on <coughs> August 20th. An ordinance determining to proceed with the improvement of certain public streets within the corporate limits of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio, by lighting them. Ordinance 18 17, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on August 20th. An ordinance levying assessments for the improvements of certain public streets within the corporate limits of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio, by lighting them. Ordinance 18-18, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on August 20th. An ordinance certifying to the Clark County Auditor and authorizing placement on the tax duplicate certain delinquent utility accounts for collection with real estate taxes. Ordinance 18-19, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on August 20th. An ordinance certifying to the Clark County Auditor and authorizing placement on the tax duplicate certain uncollected weed and or grass cutting fees for collection with real estate taxes. Ordinance 18-20, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on August 20th. An ordinance certifying to the Clark County <coughs> Auditor and authorizing placement on the tax duplicate certain uncollected nuisance abatement fees for collection with real estate taxes. Ordinance 18-21E, introduction, public hearing, and action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the expenditure of funds over $25,000 for the purpose of the City of New Carlisle, Ohio's annual audit of financial statements for the year ending December 31st, 2017, and authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for said audit with the auditor of the state of Ohio and declaring an emergency. Council? Mr. Cook? I'll make a motion that we pass 18-21-E. Second. Second. Mm -hmm. An explanation of this ordinance, every year the city gets audited by the state of Ohio or, thir or a third party uh, auditor. This year we are with the state of Ohio and it goes through our finances from the previous year. So right now we are undertaking our 2017 audit 
It is something that the state requires every city to do. It also requires the city to pay for that audit. Uh, this year, it, I think it's coming about 27,000 and some change. Uh, council recently reduced the spending limit to under 25, which is why there's a legislation piece in front of council. Historically, we probably have had legislation pieces because it was always under the previous $50,000 amount. Council? Yeah, Mr. Bridge, I think it's definitely interesting that it's required, but you have to pay for it. Absolutely. One of those great un unfunded, unfunded mandates. mandates. Don't you love it? <laughs> Happy on the same page there. <laughs> Mrs. Werner. Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Ordinance accepted, 6-0. Moving on to Ordinance 18-22E, Introduction, <coughs> Public Hearing, and Action Tonight, an ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for the purchase of <coughs> roadway de-icing rock salt and declaring an emergency. Council. Mr. Lindsay. I move to accept Ordinance 18-22-E. Uh, and an explanation of this ordinance. Um, well, there's a little history with this one. I'll give you the Reader's Digest version. Um, every year we bid out for our road salt we put in in the winter months. Every year we do that. Sometimes we have one bidder come back, sometimes we have two, sometimes you have three. And we are able to take the lowest and best bid off of those who respond back. This particular year we had one company respond, and it was Compass Minerals. And reviewing their contract for purchase, I noticed something called indemnification. <clears throat> and basically what indemnification is, it says if they do anything wrong, they are holding the city responsible to an open dollar into the mount. Well, that is not legal in the state of Ohio. Cities, uh, villages, townships cannot enter into any agreement that has an open-ended dollar amount. So we went back and forth. They refused to change the agreement. So it put the city in the rock in a hard spot. It truly did because they were the only one who bid it. So it took about maybe two weeks um, to get it figured out, but we actually um, gave uh, Compass Minerals some updated legislation that says this is why we can't do it. Um, I did learn of Thursday or possibly early Friday, I'm sorry, I can't remember which day, that they did agree to change it, which is why we see that as an emergency ordinance on, on today's agenda. Normally we don't like to do emergency measures, um, but this particular case we, we have to because we have to sign this agreement and get it back to them. Um, but we did have some issues with the context and the language of the purchase agreement. I am happy to report that that has been alleviated. Council, any comments, questions? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lindsay. Mr. Bridge, on uh, the indemnification, the copy we're looking at is just lined out. Yes. You lined those out? I did. Why did I, why wasn't it initialed by the other company? By the because the other company's out of I think Kansas City, they and it was done last month. Copy over. I have an email that states to do that. So if they have any questions or concerns about it, I understand where you're going with it. Yeah. If they have any concerns, I can just fly it out, print the email out that tells, instructs us to do just that. And okay. I'll be happy to forward that on the council Tuesday, uh, tomorrow. That would be appreciated. Sure. Because uh, when I read that, I thought there is no way I would ever sign a contract like that. <laughs> no, I made sure there's an email. Not without yeah. both parties' initials sure. to know that it was done. Sure. Okay, thank you, sir. No problem. Council? <clears throat> no comment, Mr. Cup. And my own understanding that we have to take 250 to 300 tons of salt. Yeah, there's a minimum amount. We have to pay 80, about 80, 80 percent. 95, something like that. Well, that's the price per ton, but we have to buy 80 percent of what we bid it out. Now, will that store out there? Yeah, oh, Is yeah. Big enough to oh, yeah, store? yeah, yeah, yeah. Howie's not going to bid out something we can't, we can't hold. Yes. Is that all? I mean, you know, I'm just, that's what I'm sure, talking sure, about. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah, no, it, it definitely holds it all. Yep. I mean, it's a rip off, but. Hey, the prices did shoot up, but when you have one person bid, and I guess they can control the prices, <laughs> you know. Antitrust legislation. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Council, any other? It's a good question, though, because it's a lot of salt. Yeah. <laughs> I have a question. How much salt do we estimately use a year? Uh, about 100 or 150, depending on the weather. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're getting a minimum of 300? Uh, I think it's like 200 and something. 200 something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Right. And I would like to actually, now that we're on this discussion, is look to getting extra. 
That way, if this happens next year or we have issues, we can say we have someone to reserve. Yeah. Absolutely. You can probably bid less. Yeah. I, think that's I don't think we'll get to the point where we have enough to get us through a full year, but if we have to get it through like the first <coughs> few months, we at least have something. Yeah, I definitely agree. Sure. All right, Council Anna, comments, questions? No. Mrs. Berner. Okay. <coughs> Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Chammy. Yes. Ordinance accepted, 6-0. That one was a headache for the past three weeks, not going like that. <laughs> uh, moving on to other business. We have work sessions scheduled for August 9th and August 23rd here at Smith Park Shelter House at 7 p.m. Congressman Warren Davidson will hold his mobile office hours at the city building on the fourth Tuesday of each month from 1.30 p.m. until 2. The Crime Watch meeting will be held August 8th 6.30 p.m. here at Smith Park Shelter House. And National Night Out will be held Tuesday, August 7th from 6 to 8 p.m. in the Security um, Church of the Brethren parking lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mr. Vice Mayor. The uh, National Night Out, apparently it's supposed to rain tomorrow. If it rains, it will be canceled. We have no way of knowing until it actually does rain. We don't figure really anybody would show up if it's pouring down. The, uh, I just wanted to let the citizens that are here to know that. So if it's raining, there won't be anybody there. Uh, somebody may be there to tell people if they did show up, the people we have coming, that uh, we cancel it. Because we have no other place to do it. Uh, we could move things to the fire department. Did you check on that, sir? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Just before I get too I'd have been there. <coughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mr. Bridge uh, volunteered or offered the fire department to us if it did rain. The, uh, but the people and the equipment, there's no place to put, not the people, but the equipment that may show up tomorrow night, there's no place to stick them over there. So uh, all the equipment would not be there. The fire department's not going to come out with their equipment. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure the other departments that I have lined up or we have lined up will not be there, show up either. So that's just a uh, footnote in case it does rain tomorrow, like the weatherman says it's supposed to. Council? Anything else? Hearing nothing? Ms. Lowry? Mr. Mayor, move we adjourn. Hey, we'll be a second. You by the side of your mic. We are adjourned. <laughs>